Hello neighbor, I'm Robert Burns and welcome back to another edition of Sound Off Louisiana. And uh, let me just say this, uh, one, the key reason that Sound Off Louisiana was formed in the first place is because quite often uh, it's very difficult for the mainstream media to have an interest uh, in issues that affect uh, particularly smaller folk. I mean, they're just, they're just not going to run with it. That's, how, that's the whole reason my blog was formed. Uh, but let me just say this, um, there are instances in which the mainstream media becomes quite interested uh, in investigations that we are conducting at Sound Off Louisiana. And today's feature involves just such an instance. Uh, and it happens to involve a Lafayette Parish public school, specifically the WD and Mary Smith Career Academy, which would fall under the Lafayette Parish school system. And before I go into uh, what our investigation entailed, I want to break away and we're going to give you this feature that ran on KLFY Channel 10 in Lafayette regarding this particular situation. Let's break away. The Parish school system says it's okay if people observe a teacher in the classroom, even if they're not a registered student. The school district says it has a system in place to weed out anyone who could be a danger to students. However, there's a watchdog video blogger who thinks otherwise. News 10's Renee Allen brings us his concerns new tonight at 6. This is Robert Burns. He says he found at WD and Mary Baker Smith Career Center an adult is being allowed to earn in-class credits toward a cosmetology license. But why? The parish school board explains. And I began delving into this matter as a result of some sources that uh, you know, indicated to me that this was going on. Chief Administrative Officer Joe Craig says the adults who have attended class at WD for them over four years were not enrolled as students. They were there as observers in order to get credit hours for a cosmetology license. They actually have to go through human resources and get a background check and fingerprint. Thank you, Don. Video blogger Robert Burns says he's no professional and only has questions like everyone else. The background check and fingerprinting, he says, offers some relief that an inappropriate student-adult situation is less likely to happen. For him, the alternative would be a serious liability issue. How enraged are the parents going to be, especially of the affected child, uh, says, well, who was this and what were they doing on campus in the first place? The State Cosmetology Board tells News 10 that to obtain a license, the candidate must be a student at a cosmetology school. Plus, in-class credit hours are acceptable, but not in place of schooling. Burns says there are also questions about whether WD has instruction effective enough to offer credit hours for a state license. The sources I've spoken with who are pretty knowledgeable of it, that this program, that that school is not even eligible to offer a program uh, that would enable people to get a teaching license. The older observers are never left alone with the kids. The, the teacher, Mr. Martin, is always with the kids. Craig says, as a best practice, it's ideal to have substitute teachers who have worked with LPSS, and an observer would fit the bill. When he's absent, somebody is teaching the class that truly knows cosmetology as opposed to the kids just doing crossword puzzles. Lafayette, Renee Allen, California News 10. All right, so exactly what is that happened here? Well, let me just say that back in early October of last year, I started receiving numerous complaints uh, about the fact that uh, this public school was permitting uh, observers, uh, and that's the phrase that Mr. Craig used to describe them, onto campus, uh, just coming in off the street, uh, and that they were sitting in on these classes in order to obtain credits to become licensed as a teacher, uh, a teacher of cosmetology, which is, uh, at least according to the experts that I have talked with, and I have talked with quite a few, uh, several violations going on here. Number one, in order to be in, this is for high school students. So in order to be properly enrolled, you have to be, number one, a high school student, None of these observers were. They had already completed high school. One of them is almost 60 years old. He completed high, actually older than me. So the folks, that's old, uh, and had completed high school uh, quite some time ago. Uh, and so you have to be in high school. They, they've, all these observers, fa observers failed that test. 
Uh, they had to be high school age. Well, clearly they failed that, a, that test as well. And critically, they cannot already possess a cosmetology license. High school students typically don't already have a cosmetology license. All of these observers were being brought in off the street uh, did hold a cosmetology license, every one of them. Now, when I got that information, I did what is any prudent investigative journalist would do, uh, and I made a public records request of the State Board of Cosmetology, and I asked for all applications that had been made by uh, testing applicants for a teaching license for which the W.D. Smith Career Academy had served as the school to provide the education. And it turns out there were five. Uh, and uh, so I copied all of those records and scanned them. Uh, and then about three, three and a half, four weeks ago, I just sent a blanket email out to the, the, the uh, superintendent of Lafayette Parish uh, Public Schools, Donald Aguilar, along with all the school board members, uh, along with the cosmetology board. And I said, hey, look, folks, uh, this is what I've observed, and I just asked a series of questions. Now, I pretty much knew the answers to the questions, but I left it open-ended, very friendly. Uh, didn't hear a word back. Well, let me rephrase it. Dr. Aguilar had called me within 10 minutes of the email going out, and he said that I had to be confused, that there was no way this was going on uh, in the Lafayette Parish public school system. I told him to go and look on the link, and he will see the student, the observer files and he will see it is in fact going on uh, and that's when channel 10 got involved and and uh, you know I'm, I'm not going to hammer the Lafayette Parish School Board because they have realized that what happened here never should have happened and they have corrected it, and I'll get to that in just a moment but if you'll notice Mr. Craig initially said Mr. Martin and he is the he is the instructor who has allowed these observers in uh, he's got a real problem on his hands, okay? Because you have completely unauthorized observers on this campus, okay? Uh, at any rate, uh, uh, Mr. Craig, if you'll notice in Miss Allen's feature from Channel 10, he, she, he said they're never, they're, they, these observers are never left alone with the students, and then shortly thereafter he contradicted himself and said that when Mr. Martin, the Kevin Martin, the instructor, is absent, it's great to have an observer who actually knows something about cosmetology. Well, now you've tried to have it both ways. Uh, you've tried to say he's, they, they, this observer's never left alone with the student students, and then you turn around later and say they're, they are substitute teaching, uh, you know, even though they are just observers. Uh, but if you'll notice, he also said all of these observers are fingerprinted and background checked. Well, I knew that not to be the case, okay? Uh, and so I just made a very simple public records request. I said, okay, if that's the case, I want to see them. Um, uh, you can redact out everything. I don't care. I just want to see the name and the date that uh, these background checks were run. Well, in three out of the five, there were no background checks and on our fingerprinting of any kind. These people were just off the street. Um, and then on the other two, they were run, but they were run after are near, very near the completion of the program long after uh, they had been exposed to these students. And I want to emphasize that uh, these folks are flunking the test numerous times. The, they're flunking the license, the, the, the teaching license test numerous times. And I say that to say this, uh, Wednesday of last week, today is the 20th, so I guess it would have been the 14th if I do my math right. I will tell you there were a couple of school board members who got very testy with me uh, about me saying you're ignoring my public records request. You're not gonna get away with ignoring it. And I will admit that uh, I, you know, I try the honey approach and when honey doesn't work, I switch to 100% vinegar, okay? Uh, and these school board members kind of took me to task uh, about me pointing out the public records law and the fact that the, the penalty for nonconformity with it is $100 a day and it is a personal liability to the custodian of the records. Uh, but at any rate, they decided to tone it down dramatically when two hours after they fired off these type emails telling me that I was babbling and that 
uh, you know, <laughs> I better cease this threatening employee. I'm not threatening anybody. I'm just giving you the law and telling you I want my public records. Two hours after two of these school board members fired off those emails, you had the unfortunate situation over in Florida with Mr. Cruz, okay? Now, this is somebody who was not brought in on campus. He just decided to go there. We're talking about a situation here where these people were literally invited into campus. They're not students. One of them is near 60 years old. And these people are flunking the exam left and right. So who is to say that he just doesn't up and one day say, you know what, my life's over. I've tried this numerous times, it's not working. I'm gonna go out in a blaze of glory. And he opens up and he does a massacre like that at the W.D. Smith Career Academy. Can you imagine the public outrage across the nation at the fact that this person had no business being on campus? And yet, the doors were open to him. No background check. Nobody knows a damn thing about this gentleman. Nothing. He's almost 60 years old. That's the latest student. All right. So I will give the Lafayette Parish School System credit. They did a huge mea culpa, uh, and they admitted that this shouldn't have happened. Okay. And I'm going to provide to you a memorandum that went out from Mr. Craig. We're going to put it up in big uh, so that you can see it. And basically, he has said that I'm not going to read the whole thing, but effective immediately, this practice ceases. Okay? No one else is going to be permitted onto this campus without it being signed off by uh, the director for this career academy. Uh, and so I commend the Lafayette Parish School System. They had a knee jerk reaction. They were afraid that there would be panic amongst parents to know that these people were on campus and they weren't authorized. That was not well advised on Mr. Craig's part, but I will give credit where credit is due. They fixed it, okay? They have fixed it and they have said, this isn't gonna happen anymore. And that's what this memo says. And we're gonna provide it for you to read in detail. But I wanna shift my focus to the cosmetology board because I, it, this is far from over from them, okay? And you have already seen numerous videos I have done with regard to the incredible corruption that it takes place in this cosmetology board. You've saw, you saw the video of Steve Young, the executive director, and Edwin Neal, the chairman, just sashaying right on into the legislature without any board authorization whatsoever and going in and trying to get a 40% increase in the licensing fee. Well, that got shot to hell. But here's the key thing. I made this public records request back in October. Remember what I told you? I made the public records request back in October. And it took me almost a month. They spent almost a month getting me these records for these, these students. You can count them on one hand. A month. Okay? But here's the critical thing. Sherry Morris is an outstanding attorney. She just got named partner at a new firm. Okay? So when she saw this situation and turned it over to Edwin Neal and Steve Young, I let three months go by to give them the opportunity to address this issue. So now you know these people are on campus and you're just going to sit there and let it continue to go on? Knowing that a, a cruise situation like what took place in Florida can happen like this and you're aware of this? And they did nothing. They did nothing. And they are continuing to avoid my public records request wherein I have asked for, okay, you want to say that, that this was authorized? Lafayette Parish's school system is now saying, we know damn well it wasn't authorized. And I give them credit for that. The cosmetology board I'm asking to see where this was authorized in the minutes. Where, where in the hell did Kevin Martin ever get approval to conduct this thing? And I am keep being told that, oh, that's going to take, oh, God only knows how long. I've been waiting for two or three weeks on this. 
And I, I, I'm, I'm totally amazed that you wouldn't even have a school file in which you would be able to access. They have, they're making the auctioneer's licensing board look like a record-keeping gold standard. And I'm telling you right now, that is a tough feat to do. That's how pathetic the records are at this cosmetology board. Now, I'm going to go ahead and throw out my own theory. And I, I mean, until they can prove otherwise, it sure does look like this was a seat of the, seat of the pants, wink and a nod, keep doing what you're doing, and we're all good. And I guess they figured that, well, Burns has never brought this up. Apparently he fell asleep. He just decided he wanted these records for some reason. No, Burns was waiting for you to do something internally. And you sat there and you didn't do a damn thing. And now you better provide an explanation. Because this, what happened in that Lafayette Parish Public School could have very easily triggered a cruise situation in Florida. And I noticed those school board members, they didn't continue any more emails to me after that cruise situation happened two hours after they were jumping down my throat. I guess they've decided it's not so wise that we jump down this investigative blogger's throat over this issue. But I'm going to tell you right now, somebody's got some explaining to do at the cosmetology board and you're looking at somebody who's going to insist they do the explaining. We'll update this feature, find out what the hell was going on here. I'm going to tell you right now, it's an open-ended question about whether or not these students were being charged. If they weren't supposed to be students, let me go back, observers, okay, about whether they were being charged for this instruction. There also, you'll see in this memo, there's also the issue of what's called holdover students. Those are students who had completed their high school degree, and apparently Mr. Martin would feel, you are ordained, you are a good student, and he would tell two or three of them to return the next school year to complete their remaining 500 hours to get their full-blown cosmetology license. Those are just regular students. You're only supposed to get 1,000 hours. Actually, I have video of the board saying no more than 500 hours can take place in a high school. Yet somehow, W.D. Smith's offering 1,000 hours, and beyond that, Mr. Martin, apparently, if you are deemed to be in his good graces, he will tell you to come in the next school year and sit as an observer and get your other 500 hours. Mm. Now, I do not know where the charges were being made, as in cash money for the service. I can tell you I have some empirical evidence that it was, but that's not proof. I have some pretty strong empirical evidence that it was. I have some, the figure $5,000 has been put out there. Don't have the proof. Don't know that it happened. But I can tell you $5,000 is one hell of a bargain compared to what the private schools charge. So if it was happening, if one of the students happened to have hypothetically said, I came here because it's by far the cheapest school around here. Hmm. Is that an indication? Money changed hands? I don't know. It should be for the board to get to the bottom of. Actually, it really needs to be an outside agency that gets to the bottom of it because I don't trust this internal board to investigate a damn thing. It's got a proven history of corruption. And I think there may have been some thought that with Francis Hand gone and uh, Edwin Neal coming in, there are some folk telling me that Edwin Neal is making Francis Hand look like a saint. Okay? And all I can tell you is they had the most disgraced judge in this state, in Trudy White. And at a recent meeting, they just bowed down to her like she was a god and want to bend over backwards for some program she wants to implement with regard to prison hair braiding. And they got no problems with the sharp scissors in the hands of prisoners, but Edwin Neal would say, I got a real problem with unincarcerated people. Well, there, there is some really, really messed up mentality here.
We're going to stay on top of this. I've given you as much as I know. Go ahead and take the time to look over this interesting memo from Mr. Craig at the Lafayette Parish School Board. Uh, like I said, they did the proper thing. They did a mea culpa. They said, we are nipping this in the bud. It will not happen, period, going forward. What are you going to do, Cosmetology Board? Because you sure have been awfully invasive in all respects. Once Miss Morris alerted you, Steve Young, to the fact this was going on, why did you not do anything? Once Miss Morris alerted you, Edwin Neal, to the fact this situation existed, why did you just sit for, for three months and you probably wouldn't be doing anything now were it not for this pesty little blogger? Were you going to just let a, a potential cruise situation happen? And what is the reaction of the public to be that the cosmetology board knew this was going on? The Lafayette Parish School System, I'm going to be blunt with you, I don't think they had the slightest clue this was going on. And I think that's reflected in Dr. Aguilar's knee-jerk phone call to me where he said, I had to be confused. There was no way this was going on in the Lafayette Parish School System. Give them credit. They did a mea culpa. They now know it was going on, and they have nipped it in the bud. Cosmetology board, the board balls in your court. Let's see how you respond. Thank you so much. We'll have a further update on this feature in the not too distant future. Thank you so much. Once again, Robert Burns, sound off Louisiana.